and gentlemen are you feeling a very intense energy well it's not yet time uh, we are still <laughs> one week away from that energy what in the universe am i talking of yes 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 you have seen it right i am talking of the dangerous mars ketu conjunction that will happen in the sign of libra tula rashi from 3rd of october to 15th of november now ketu uh, will leave libra on the 30 31st of october uh, but mars will be in libra so i have mentioned the date as 15th november so it means the first 27 days this conjunction will be there at its peak and the remaining 15 days uh, maybe that not intense okay so what will happen so i understand you might be tempted to jump to your uh, ascendant sign but before you jump it's important that you understand what this transit is about okay well once you understand that you can jump immediately all right so what is mars what is ketu both uh, mars is a agni tattva planet okay uh, and ketu also represents fire in the sense you know spiritual fire so when Mars and Ketu are conjunct together, you might have this tendency to blast on things or on yourself or on other people uh, without much valid reason. Okay, uh, of course, it's never good to blast on anybody, uh, even if there's a valid reason. We should do it in a way that the person does not feel bad. But nonetheless, uh, this conjunction could instigate us or rather uh, inspire us in a negative way to uh, do things which we regret later okay now this conjunction is happening in the sign of uh, libra you know we know what libra is right libra is the sign of balance libra is negotiations so there's a proverb uh, which says that uh, the best negotiation is when both the parties leave the table with some dissatisfaction okay so therefore Whenever this conjunction is uh, there in the sky, we might be tempted to make one-sided negotiations. But that is something which we have to realize that uh, a negotiation cannot be one-sided. Okay, So we have to understand that uh, expecting the negotiation to be one-sided is actually misleading and it does no good to us nor to the other party. So therefore, if you have some plans you know if you want to get things done from somebody from somewhere then you need to exercise a bit of caution because this transit can give you this feeling that you you are always right and you can never be wrong and others can never be right okay so therefore if you feel such uh, vibes then it is imperative that you uh, talk to the uh, other party and you try to see how you can actually uh, what are your non-negotiables basically what is what are some of the non-negotiables for the other party okay so now you can see in the screen so for example uh, for a particular ascendant like uh, let's say for example you know you talk of Aries ascendant so this transit will be in your seventh you know I'll go to Aries but just to explain uh, for example if this is in your seventh house then then this could uh, directly be related to your spouse or the people that you deal on a daily daily day-to-day -day basis okay it could be uh, also dealing with your family members sometimes or your business partners okay so basically with whom you spend a lot of time among all the other people in this universe so uh, for them uh, it may happen that they may complain that you are not listening to them okay so therefore uh, one of the very important things that you can do for this transit is to chant om namo bhagavate narasimhaya this mantra you can chant 108 times in a mala this will actually help you to calm down your uh, raging mind and it will also help you to uh, understand how things are okay and because of this conjunction you may uh, do things in a way which you feel is good for you in the short term but in the long run you may regret doing that okay so therefore uh, please understand that uh, if you just do things uh, impulsively then it will not do good because uh, Libra uh, is a sign where balance is expected and that is the reason why Mars doesn't do that well okay 
now uh, of course that does not mean that you uh, get negotiated in a wrong sense you know uh, by the other party but uh, it is important that you try to figure out uh, what is the ultimate objective of your uh, negotiation or your discussion okay if you figure that out uh, well then uh, things will be much easier because then you can actually work in a way that fulfills not just you or the other party but also uh, the ultimate agenda of the negotiation okay so as usual if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me my website is also down below in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him and if you like this video which i'm sure you will do please hit the thumbs up at the end and share this video with somebody who is very much interested to know what will happen uh, for the different ascendants during this transit okay so let's jump into the first ascendant let's talk of aries so for aries this is very 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 important because mars is none other than your lagna lord himself so if your lagna lord is uh, transiting in uh, with ketu then this is a very critical time and also mars is your eighth lord and he is also transiting your kendra so libra is actually the seventh house for aries ascendants right so uh, for aries uh, you may feel that you are a bit too assertive than necessary with your husband or your wife and then that could create issues in your marriage later on so please cool down and uh, from the seventh it will also aspect your ascendant so you could also sometimes try to harm yourself okay so if you are feeling too much anxiety and too much nervousness well uh, maybe you can uh, reduce it by doing some anaerobic exercises you know like uh, high intensity interval training you know doing weight training uh, like uh, doing very fast jogging running uh, very intense cycling you can cycle go for cycling in the mountains and uh, if you feel that uh, you have too many things to do yet you have not done anything well then maybe uh, it could be that mars is creating this hyper anxious energy so for you it is advisable that you not just run behind things but you also understand why you are running behind something and do you really have the resources to achieve that task okay so if you feel that you need to do something then it is very important that you actually try to see you actually try to understand how that can be done in the first place how have others done it how can i do it and how should i do it depending on my nature my goals and interests so uh, do not harm yourself or uh, do not stay late in the night because this can create a lot of anxiety and uh, you might be tempted to watch you know like uh, stuff like horror movies violent things you know or even adult material in the internet so uh, best is if you can get up early and uh, don't stay idle uh, always stay with somebody if possible and please stay busy don't just uh, do nothing and don't just uh, spoil your uh, consciousness okay so utilize your energy properly it's a very intense energy but if you use it properly uh, you will make great gains okay all the best aries all right so now we go to taurus so what's going on taurus so for taurus uh, this transit is in your sixth house so mars is the seventh lord and uh, also the twelfth lord so the mul trikon rashi aries is in the twelfth house so this transit uh, can be very favorable for you or it can be a very difficult time for you depending on your mahadasha and antardasha and also depending on how you use it now what are the positives of this conjunction you know this conjunction can be positive if you use it properly to do hard work so this conjunction will give you a lot of energy because sixth house is the house of hard work and six mars himself is the karaka for the sixth house uh, which represents hard work enemies battles okay so uh, if you use this properly then it could be a time to gain victory over your enemies okay uh, open enemies uh, hidden enemies any any kind of people who are uh, always opposing you uh, and at the same time uh, it can inspire you to uh, take some uh, decisions on your health you know so maybe 
uh, there is some pitta imbalance in your body because sixth house shows diseases okay so uh, if you if you are feeling that you know your energy is like too intense and you are uh, losing focus in life then maybe it's a good time to visit a ayurvedic doctor during this time and get a checkup of your doshas you know maybe your uh, pitta dosh could be higher and that uh, might be causing some other problems in in life okay and also because mars is the 12th lord in the 6th so there could be some uh, surgery or some hospitalization which could come during this time uh, something minor or major uh, depending on your mahadasha and antardasha in the chart <coughs> Uh, so this is like the positive side you know if you use it positively so if you use it negatively you know then uh, you might do a lot of gossiping backbiting and uh, you might do a lot of politics you know you might do things behind the uh, curtains which is not very good and which you may regret later so if you have a bunch of friends who are always uh, encouraging you to gossip then maybe uh, these 45 days it is important that you stay away from them because you know we know right uh, this is the age of screenshots and recorded conversation so whenever you are speaking something uh, somebody may you know record it without your notice and they may uh, make that content viral okay and you may be wondering what the hell did i do why did i do it you might be regretting this later on so uh, stay away from people who are always uh, criticizing others and also you should yourself restrain from criticizing others always okay so if you use this properly then this can be a wonderful time a wonderful transit uh, otherwise this may create problems so wish you all the best taurus okay so now we will go to the next which is gemini mithun rashi so for gemini lagna mars is your sixth lord and he's also your 11th lord the mool trikon rashi is in the 11th house and mars is transiting of fifth house well uh, this is this is a very good time to focus on your hobbies and especially uh, try to see how you can do your hobbies a bit more intensely okay why do i say intensity because mars ketu and the fifth house all the three represent intensity okay and because ketu is also involved so uh, this could also make you very spiritual so you could be developing some interests in doing some uh, worship related to Lord Narsimha or in relation to Hanumanji you know uh, or in relation to Agni Dev you know some Homa, Yagya, Anushthan Adi you might be interested to do so if you feel that uh, there is some connection uh, which you feel towards any of these deities that I mentioned like especially Jwala Narsimha then maybe you could go to some nearby temple of Lord Narsimha Dev and offer some prayers okay apart from this you could also develop interests towards you know fire or you know like very intense sports or uh, archery or something like that and uh, because the sixth house represents you know your job so uh, you might have to work a bit more intensely towards your job because uh, when you do this then you will see that the fifth house is rewarding you because fifth house is past life good deeds okay so if you have some uh, very uh, critical tasks then this is the best time to take it towards completion and this is undoubtedly the best time for you to go and achieve uh, all your professional desires okay because fifth house is eighth from the tenth house which is like saying uh, it's like death of a job or it's like uh, you getting some new job opportunity okay so please try to focus on your hobbies passions your vision in life and then this transit will turn out very favorably for you because you might also meet new people because of mars being the 11th lord and you might go into some events and you might develop new skills and hobbies and interests and lastly because fifth house is also the house of love romance you know maybe it is possible you might uh, encounter somebody with whom you might feel some attraction and then get into a relationship with okay all the best gemini so now let us go to cancer so what's going on cancer so for cancer mars is actually your fifth lord and primarily the tenth lord because aries is in your tenth house and he's transiting your fourth house libra is your fourth house right 
so fifth lord tenth lord transiting the fourth house this certainly has to do with some uh, it could be property purchase you know if mars or saturn is indicated in your dashas and it could also indicate vehicle purchases if venus is involved in your mahadasha antar dasha and if your dashas are uh, indicating you know the second house sixth house tenth house or eleventh house then well uh, this could be a time for you to uh, develop on your profession uh, but fourth house represents the background because it is like the patal okay it is like uh, it's like opposite of the midheaven it is opposite of the 10th house which is where the sun is uh, at noon so fourth house is where the sun is in the in midnight okay so it does not represent limelight directly but it represents those things which can help you to get limelight so therefore if you have any uh, area which you feel that you should upskill yourself and uh, you should grow then well uh, maybe this is the best time for you to get a new certification or do some new training uh, because fifth lord uh, also shows you know some learning or some other uh, engaging uh, interactions which you might have with people in regards to some skill you know so try to join some a community or some uh, group where you can actually discuss you know have prominent discussions and uh, thereby upgrade your profession because mars is your 10th lord and the only caution which i can give you here is that fourth house represents the mother you know so uh, please take care that uh, your relationship with your mother is not spoiled uh, because you know you might get into too many arguments uh, and you might regret that later okay so all the best cancer now we go to leo so what's going on leo so for leo uh, mars is your fourth lord he's also your ninth lord so the transit is happening in your third house okay and mars is primarily your ninth lord because aries is in your ninth house now this is a very interesting transit because the lord of the ninth is transiting the third so what is the lord of the ninth house indicating the ninth lord always shows uh, some some knowledge that you gain from somebody else okay but third house shows the knowledge that you give to somebody else so now what is this you know so are you gaining something or are you giving out something well you are doing both actually so if you have any plans to get some knowledge you know get a higher uh, higher education or do some short certification or nano degree as they say then this is a very good time for you to do that and also if you uh, want to do something in um, uh, social media then also it's a very good time because the fourth and ninth explicitly deals with education and just like for cancer now for you also for leo lagnas mars is a yoga karaka it is a very important planet okay so because this transit is in your third house so uh, you should not keep any knowledge to yourself okay so you should always try to give out the knowledge that you have and you should always try to uh, benefit others and enlighten others with your knowledge the more you do this the more you'll be benefited and uh, it depends on how you do it you know mars can sometimes represent the ink so uh, you can also write down things you know or maybe type it you know so whatever helps you to uh, put out the knowledge to the our outside world to the outer world please do that and the only care that you should exercise is not to get into or uh, conflicts with anybody in social media because of some petty things like you know politics or religious debates and all this okay so please refrain from doing that educate yourself uh, make yourself more knowledgeable learn and give out knowledge uh, make videos make reels write posts and educate others also and i think this will be a very good time for you okay thank you leos now we go to virgo so for virgo what's going on third lord eighth lord transiting the second house aries is in your eighth house so eighth lord transiting the second something to do with your family in laws inheritance okay so please be on the watch out with your family because 
uh, Mars transiting the second house uh, it's like a classic case of some issues with the families uh, with your family and also the in-laws so uh, because this is the sign of Libra so this will be something related to some negotiation as I said in the introduction because it might happen that uh, there is some event in your family and uh, your, you and your, your family and your in-laws are saying something different so now you have to find truce between both of them and you will actually have to see what can be done how can you best nego negotiate in between and then uh, we also have mars as the third lord so when third lord is uh, transiting the second house then um, it is certainly related to uh, something uh, around social media okay so uh, please make sure that uh, you do not get into any quarrels you know in social media any fights otherwise uh, you may regret that later and second house also shows your network net worth so uh, if you feel that uh, you can apply for some new job or some promotion well then do it because the second house is also artha house so something related to money can open up okay uh, but nonetheless uh, be careful with your family and your in-laws and uh, social media battles uh, and also one thing which you could do is if you uh, because the third lord is transiting the second so it might be possible that you might to use some kind of technology to make your life more easier or your family's life more easier okay so yeah maybe you can install some device you know some smart device at your house so that you can, you can monitor your house when you are away you know this is just an example so use technology to make your life better okay so all the best Virgos so now we come to Libra so for Libra Lagna Mars is your second Lord and your seventh Lord and uh, he's primarily your seventh Lord because Aries is in the seventh house and Libra is your Lagna itself. So Mars Rahu Ketu is transiting your Lagna itself. Okay. Very, very, very intense time. It is a great, great, great time for you to make those big changes in life, which you have been longing for from many, many, many months, weeks, or even years or decades. <laughs> but uh, while doing that, you have to exercise some caution because uh, you may feel that at times you know you, you you have too much to do but you are not able to do anything okay uh, so if this happens then you need to understand that you cannot do everything so you you have to prioritize things properly you know all the libra out here because otherwise uh, it may happen that you know people are calling you and they are asking for your help you know they want he wants your help she wants your help they want your help everybody wants you for some reason and then you are now feeling overwhelmed in regards to what should you do should you uh, help them or should you help yourself okay so therefore uh, please make sure that you attend to your priorities you know and uh, make sure you do not take too much anxiety because there could be some nervous breakdown or there could be some anxiety or panic attacks which can come during this time you know because of overload depending on your mahadasha and antardasha so <coughs> Uh, when you do this then you will realize that um, you you can you you, you uh, are attending to your priorities well and then gradually things will be sorted okay and during such times it is very important for you uh, if required to take the guidance from some counselor or some coach who can actually help you to uh, <coughs> gain some good insights in life okay so this is a great time uh, take care of your health do uh, do anaerobic exercises like running jogging uh, hiking and all this get the passion out of your body and uh, also second house has to do with the family so take care of your family uh, be careful with what you speak to them uh, and your spouse especially because seventh house is the spouse also okay so great time uh, use this properly and do not take anxiety more than what you should okay all the best libra <coughs> now we go to scorpio so for scorpio another intense period why do i say this because 
Mars is your Lagna Lord nonetheless and he's also your sixth Lord the Multicorn Rashi is in the sixth house which is Aries but nonetheless he's still your Lagna Lord uh, and Lagna Lord is transiting the 12th so this is a time for you to cultivate detachment and to see what are the things that you should uh, which you should send away you know, from your life okay because 12th house is not a time to make something but 12th house is a time where uh, it is advisable for you to give up certain things because many times we want to do so many things in life and we feel that okay we should do but then we are not able to do it the reason is not that uh, we are not able to do something new the reason is because we are holding on to something which is uh, old and which is no, old not just uh, in terms of history but old bad habits okay so therefore uh, if you have certain habits certain patterns certain behaviors which uh, you feel uh, which are pulling you behind in life you know which are drowning you then uh, it is very important that you actually uh, get rid of them you know take help of somebody who can actually help you like you know some spiritual guru or some guide some shiksha guru or a diksha guru or you know some astrologer also sometimes and stay away from addictions and also it is a very important time for you to focus on your health because health is wealth as they say right and 12th house is not the best house for health so during this transit uh, there could be some issues which could uh, come out in context of your health and there might be a requirement for some kind of minor surgery and if that happens uh, you need to understand that it is not bad for you it is for your good but you need to take the necessary precautions and also you need to learn to relax because the sixth law transiting 12th can give you tremendous anxiety sometimes so let go of things let go of control do your best and leave the rest to god as lord krishna says you know that you can only do your actions but you have no control over the results right so read the bhagavad gita enlighten yourself take care of your health and do not take uh, don't take much anxiety okay all the best scorpio so now we go to sagittarius Thanurashi. what's going on sagittarius your trinal lord fifth lord is transiting your 11th house he's also your 12th lord by the way so for sagittarius uh, it is an excellent 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 time well also you need to maintain caution why do i say this because the 11th house is the best house in the zodiac belt um, well of course because these days people they want money and external achievements but uh, do not forget that mars is also your 12th lord so he can also bring in expenses okay so on the positive side it is a very good time for you to socialize with people with whom you have similar interests you know so rather than doing things alone in your house because fifth house shows your interests so rather than doing things in a secluded manner you know try to <coughs> try to uh, go and find uh, people find communities with whom you can do things together and that will give you a greater meaning towards life you know higher fulfillment in life and if you can do this uh, it's going to be excellent because uh, you will also learn to let go of a lot of things which you believed is very good because the 12th lord is also transiting the 11th so some something you also will be inspired to let go okay so and also your fifth lord transiting the 11th you know so maybe uh, it could be a positive time for you to meet into to meet somebody with whom you might uh, get into a relationship with you know you might meet that person now and depending on your mahadasha antardasha in the next six months you might get into a relationship with them and uh, on the negative side uh, challenging side mars is in your 11th and 11th house shows your network circles it shows your seniors your elder brother elder sister anybody who is uh, senior to you basically so please make sure that you are respectful with them and uh, if there are certain differences then sort it out amic amicably to whatever extent you can 
and if you cannot then maybe maintain distance but do not be disrespectful okay so overall sagittarius it's a great time for you develop uh, circles uh, get into clubs and uh, build your hobbies with different people together search for love romance if required and also let go of certain old patterns okay and develop yourself into a better person all the best sagittarius so now we go into capricorn what's going on capricorn fourth lord transiting your 10th 11th lord transiting your 10th undoubtedly the best 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 position capricorn you are extremely fortunate because the 11th lord is transiting your 10th house what else do you need in life 10th lord 11th lord connection whenever it is formed this is primarily or potentially the biggest thing that can happen to your life you know in terms of wealth name fame power position career and external achievements you know so if you feel that uh, you need to go and get a new job you know that dream job which you have been aspiring for then please go and do it apply for that dream job why because mars is dig bali in your 10th house okay mars <coughs> is very 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 powerful mars will uh, help you to achieve all your desires okay but of course there is a caution that you need to exercise you know 10th house shows your bosses and your uh, seniors managers and all this you know people like the government who are in authority who has power over you okay so it is imperative that you maintain good relationship with them and you actually understand that what does your boss want from you because when mars is transiting the 11 there could be so much <coughs> confusion in terms of you know what does my boss want from me okay and because mars is the fourth lord so fourth lord transiting the 10th you know there will be some requirement of education in your profession so uh, not only is this a good time to get a new job but this could be a great time also for you to do some new certification and advance to the next level okay so if you do this well then the sky is the limit for you and you will do exceptionally well in your profession and you could also do some business related to real estate so of course overall uh i see certifications interviews uh, new job uh, focus in your profession gaining more authority power position and dominance okay and just be careful with your authority authorities and your government agencies okay great time capricorn all the best wish you good luck all right so now we go into aquarius very interesting time for aquarius a bit similar to leo but yet entirely different third lord transiting the ninth and also tenth lord transiting the ninth whenever there is a connection between the ninth and the tenth lords uh, Parashar Muni says this is like a Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga. O of course, uh, this is not completely a Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga because your ninth Lord Venus also uh, should be in the tenth house, you know, in transit or in your dashas, you know, <coughs> which means uh, Venus has to be in Scorpio, you know, then this yoga will be like uh, completely formed. But nonetheless, uh, even now, even when venus is not in scorpio in your 10th house you know if, even if just mars is in your 9th house in libra even then this yoga is formed 50 percent okay <coughs> now what does this yoga mean you know what is this dharma karma dipati yoga this this does not mean some religious work uh, this means that you will do something which is true to your nature which you are meant to do which you are good at which you are supposed to do and once you do this then you will obtain name and fame this is what dharma karma dipati yoga means okay and uh, third lord transiting the ninth 
is a very interesting combination because the third house shows things which we give to others you know via speaking consulting advising making videos writing articles blogs and all this but when uh, third lord transits the ninth then we realize oh well maybe i am good but i need to learn more okay so ninth house is higher education learning uh, you could learn about you know fire sacrifices pujas mantras yantras and also you could uh, go to some spiritual community because mars is also the planet of brahmacharya celibacy transiting the ninth house of your guru so <coughs> you could go into some spiritual community with whom you can actually uh, associate and uh, make the necessary changes to achieve something big in life okay so for aquarius great time for your profession learning and um, going to the next level uh, to get guidance to take help from people and elevate yourself materially and spiritually all right all the best aquarius well we enter pisces now pisces the last ascendant as always second lord ninth lord transiting your eighth house very 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 interesting time because the ninth lord shows education and the eighth lord shows research you know so ninth lord transiting the eighth house you know it is like research education and research are merging you know it is the best 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 time for going deep into studies into occult knowledge you know learning astrology you know learning about different ancient mantras you know reading the mahabharata the ramayana the bhagavad gita Srimad bhagavatam or the guru granth sahib or the bible or the quran whichever religious text inspires you uh, focusing on your actual subconscious thoughts because the eighth house can show things that we are very concerned about you know at an emotional level and even at a mental level so uh, this is a very good time uh, can be a bit challenging externally but uh, is a very good time for uh, going into an internal adventure and for actually understanding the deeper secrets of life you know this is a time where you should spend most of your energies in discovering yourself you know try to see what you like and this is also a time to see how does your body react to certain things you know like certain foods certain drinks certain people certain topics certain ideas <coughs> because eighth house is like absorption or whatever what do you absorb properly you know what kind of things can you learn properly what kind of things can you uh, not learn properly can, can you learn quick can you learn slowly okay so this is a time where you should uh, spend rediscovering yourself and also trying to understand why do you do certain things which you do so for you the second lord is transiting the age so it, it means it is more of a time for deeper introspection and to see which areas are uh, not up to the standard in your life and then when later on mars transits the 9th 10th and the 11th which means mars enters like you know scorpio then sagittarius then it enters capricorn you know in the next uh, like four to five months you know then it is uh, recommended that you do the practical changes but now it is a time for introspection research learning and overall self-discovery okay all the best pisces